In this video today, I'm gonna to take you through exactly how I would do eBay as a side hustle. So how to sell on eBay while working a nine to five job. I'm gonna assume that you're a full-time worker and I'm gonna assume that you wanna make some money as a side hustle by selling on eBay. You may have started already or you may be thinking about eBay as a bit of a side hustle for the future. Um, it's absolutely a great way to make some side income money. I've personally been doing it now for four years um, but I never actually did it with a nine to five job, which is why on this YouTube channel after four years, I've never made this video. But I think there's a lot of learnings that I can take away from almost 12,000 sales on the platform over four years at a slightly above part-time level. I wouldn't say I'm quite at a full-time level. Um, I'm doing about $130,000 a year in sales on eBay at the moment over the last two years. Uh, but if I was to strip it back, if I was to look at it from a person that sat in the position of working a nine to five job and wanted to continue to do that, uh, but make some side income, how would I go about it? And I haven't taken that thought lightly. I've really sat back over the last few weeks and I've thought about it long and hard. And I'm gonna package it together in six steps that I think will truly help you. I think this video on this channel is gonna be the most educational, the most useful, uh, and the most, I guess you can put these steps into place immediately today and you can get yourself started making some side hustle in the most efficient way possible, selling on eBay. Um, absolutely love selling on the platform. I think you guys are gonna benefit um, from this video a lot. Um, so, what is a side hustle in my opinion? Well, a side hustle is basically anything from a dollar all the way through to where full-time income comes into play. So this could be full-time here, and full-time could be 60K that you're earning, right? Now that there pays for the bills, but it doesn't pay for anything else. It basically, your, your full-time income is just getting you by, and that's where this side hustle comes into it. So really a side hustle is anything from zero or one all the way through to something that might match your full-time income, anywhere between that $1 to $59,000. That is, to me, a side hustle, something that we can supplement your income. You're all gonna have different goals, you're all gonna to wanna to achieve different things when it comes to a side hustle selling on eBay. And that's where the first step comes into play. How much do you wanna make? What is your actual side hustle goal when it comes to selling on eBay? So you're gonna to have to come up with some goals before you even get started. And you're also gonna need a plan of attack, a POA, as I've just decided to call it. Um, so a plan of attack. Now, a big goal for you, and before I do that big goal, I'm actually gonna explain uh, a case study, which is what we're gonna work through for this video today. We're gonna, to, while I was thinking about this, I guess this side hustle step by step, it was actually working it off a family that I had in mind. And that person is Michelle. I had Michelle in my mind the entire time here. She's 35 and she is a receptionist, all right? And she works nine to five, Monday to Friday. And she also has her husband, Peter. He's a copywriter. And he works nine to five as well. They also have two kids, Declan and Lachlan. And they play basketball and they go to school. They're in high school. Very, very busy family, right? Michelle, Peter, Declan, and Lachlan. Family of four waiting to get started selling on eBay. Their goal is to try and make, in profit, $12,000. They're making 60K each, and that pays the bills, but they want to, as a family, make $12,000 selling on eBay. And they want to do that because at Christmas, they want to go to Bali, and they want to go on a Christmas holiday. So to me, when it comes to goals and plan of attacks, that is the first step right there. Why, why are we doing this? All too many times, I think a lot of people will get into something like a side hustle and they'll just do it for the sake of making the money because they may need to. They might be in that, that position in their life where it, the money just has to come in some other way. Um, but if there's no reason, if there's no higher goal or something to strive towards or aim towards or get really excited about, like a Bali holiday for $12,000 at the end of the year, all thanks to flipping money on eBay. 
you're gonna probably fall off after a couple of months. You won't survive the year. But when you've got something like this in place, it's just gonna give you the chance of it happening a little bit more of an opportunity. Now, that was the one big goal. I, I, when it comes to goal setting, I don't like to flood it with a million goals. I like to have one overarching big goal, which is the Bali holiday for this example. But then I also have to like to have three small goals. Three goals that are gonna keep you accountable sort of along the journey towards the big goal. Um, so the three small goals, and these can be, these can literally be anything, right? Um, but we're gonna say a mini goal for these guys to achieve that 12,000, $1,000 in profit every single month. We're gonna say that we're gonna achieve an average sale price of $50, average sale price. I'll touch on that $50 average sale price metric a little bit later in this video, but let's for now just say that that is a mini goal for Michelle and Peter. To get uh, the money of $1,000, if that's what we need to do every single month to hit 12,000, we're gonna try and achieve 50 $20 profit items. If we can get sales if we can get $20 profit off every single one of our sales and we can get 50 sales every single month, well that'll hit us our, our thousand dollars and then we just need to do that every single month for a year. So $20 profit and really, when you sell something for $50 after fees and postage and cost of goods, you're probably gonna make about $20. So that's why you've set two mini goals there in, in that way. You're basically looking for 50 sales. Now, to get the 50 sales, you might have a third mini goal and you're gonna tell yourself that you're gonna list 150 listings a month. You've just given yourself that number. 150 listings. What that works out to is five a day. Non-negotiables, your goals are now set in place. You're gonna list five items a day, they are gonna be a $50 plus item, and that will ultimately make 50 sales at $20 in profit. Now, these numbers aren't exact, they aren't potentially futuristic in what will develop for you, and you could tweak things along the way, but before you get started, you just need to have some stuff to aim towards and some goals to work towards. This $50 average sale price is gonna be crucial when we go out and start sourcing some items and sourcing some stock. And this is the number that we're gonna to need to actually hit our metric that is our, our large goal. And then obviously 150 listings is gonna be the volume that we're gonna try and put into eBay over the month to generate the return in the, the sales that we need. So we now have a very, very quick plan of attack. There's our plan of attack and there's our goals. We haven't actually done anything on eBay yet, but we know exactly how we're gonna go about it and what we're actually trying to achieve. I think this is a step right here that no one does or at least not many, and it is absolutely crucial. Now, the way that we're gonna keep ourselves accountable to all of these goals is we're gonna be using a whiteboard. One like this. Go and get yourselves one of these. Crucial. If you have a whiteboard set up, with, and it might be a weekly or a daily calendar, and you can plug in how many listings you're doing each day, trying to get your five items listed each day, and you can actually visually see that, and then you might have a little, another little part of the calendar where you just type in um, how much money you're doing in sales every day to try and get yourself towards your goals that way as well. Visually seeing it and having a whiteboard set up, I, I've personally found it incredibly crucial. So that's gonna be part of the plan of attack. And we're also gonna create a sales tracking spreadsheet. Now, I won't be going into the sales tracking spreadsheet today, but there's a lot of YouTube videos that you can check out um, which basically just shows you a really quick depiction of writing out the stock that you've got ready to sell, how much you list it for, how much it ends up selling for, what the fees are which eBay will give you, what your postage costs end up being when you send it to the post office, and then obviously what your actual net profit is after it's all said and done. That will obviously allow you to then track towards, am I hitting my actual goals that I've set for myself? You need that, that spreadsheet. You can't just do this aimlessly and just start selling stuff and hope for the best and not know where your numbers lie. And it's so much easier to just do it from day one than it is to play catch up once you're a little bit into it. If you are a little bit into it and you're like, oh God, I haven't actually done a spreadsheet, I would highly recommend that you spend some time to do that. Just go back into your inventory, have a look at all of your items. Hopefully you know how much you've spent on those items that you've got. You can put an itemization of cost down. And then when it sells, you can go back through your sales history on eBay and you can see, oh, this is what I paid in fees. This is what I posted it off for. Um, and you can sort of infill the, the prior sales that you might've had. 
Um, but you're gonna need both of those. You're gonna need a whiteboard to have a look at every day and then your sales, track, uh, <laughs> sales tracking spreadsheet as well. Now, the goals, like I said, they aren't, they, they're just something to get you started. They can change, your goals can manipulate and can, they can move around and you might be selling high average sale price than what you initially thought at $50. You might be selling less, but just having something in place initially, I just think that is the biggest first step that you can do to have success as a side hustle on eBay. Now, what you wanna do for step number two is you wanna create a business bank account. This part is crucial as well. Consider this your travel fund. It might be, this is the bank account that we're gonna build up $12,000 in. We're gonna have all of our eBay money going into this one account. We're gonna go and get a, a business bank card. All of this is very easily done with any of the major bank institutions out there. Um, you can go in, you can set up a business account that they give you a business debit card. And by having this travel fund or this separate bank account, you're gonna have your full-time income being deposited into that and you're gonna see your 60K fall into there throughout the year, but then you're gonna have your business account. And your business account is gonna pull up to say, you know, there could be 20K in there, but by the end of the year, 12K of it is profit that you can pull out. So just by having a business bank account and having your money separate and not going into the one account just gives you so much more clarity with where your money's actually at. And if you do draw out of this account and you bring it across into your main account, at least give registration as to how much money that actually was. And you've got a very clearly itemized um, transaction going out of your, your second bank account. Um, so definitely set yourself up with a bank account. That would be step number two. A very, very simple step to step uh, to set up. Now, the next thing is comes down to schedule. You want an unbreakable schedule. Unbreakable schedule. There we go. So crucial. Discipline and accountability and consistency after four years of doing this has allowed me to still be here doing this. If I wasn't disciplined, consistent and accountable to myself um, and now Courtney who works for me as a part-time employee, um, we just wouldn't continue to grow because eBay is a beast when it comes to consistency. It will reward you if you give it what it needs, it will give it back to you by default. There's no questions about it. If anybody says that I haven't been getting sales lately, I can point it back onto that seller and say that it is actually because of you. And there's a lot of different reasons as to why, but the main one falls down to the fact that they are inconsistent with their listings. If you miss a day of listings, well, you're gonna miss a day of sales basically as well. So in this scenario, we've got Michelle and we've got Peter and we've got the kids. This is a look at time, right? So let's just say this is 12 and this is 12. Morning and night. AM and PM. Now, this, right, is life. And this is what stops a lot of people starting to sell on eBay as a side hustle. I don't have time. I have zero time. It is all taken up with everything in there. The kids have got school. The kids have got sport after school. Um, yeah, I'm working a nine-to-five job. I'm stressed out from my nine-to-five job. I just don't have any time at all. And you can see why. I get that. But that doesn't stop you being able to still achieve an unbreakable schedule. And in this case study, I'm seeing one thing here. And that was this right here. The hours of 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. I think that could be a perfect golden opportunity to lock in as part of your unbreakable schedule. If the kids are getting ready for school at 7.30 and they go to school at 8.30 and you start work at nine, you could be done by 7 a.m. with all of your eBay stuff. You could be working at 5 a.m. You could set an alarm for 4.30 a.m. I know it's early, but you've got that barley mindset, right? At the end of the year, this will all be worth it. These two hours that I do from Monday to Friday, these 10 hours a week, are gonna allow me to generate a thousand bucks a month and $12,000 a year in profit, and we can go to Bali. This is where the goals come into it when the time gets tough in this little window. 
So 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., what could you get done in those just two hours? A very small, insignificant amount of time. Remember, at 5 a.m. when you wake up, you might be tired initially, but then you get into the swing of it and you actually wake up, get out of bed, have a shower, and then you get down for a 5 a.m. start. You might be able to find that you're at your most energetic self. You, you've just had a good sleep, you've woken up, you're feeling good, you're most energized, the kids aren't even up yet. This is a great time to get started on your eBay. Do something for yourself and your family first, and then get into working for somebody else. Now, I use this window in my world of doing this full time for personal stuff. I do something for myself and I go for a run or I go to the gym. I do this every single day and I feel amazing to then get stuck into my nine to five. You might go and do this two hours worth of work and feel amazing because you've actually gone somewhere to achieving your goals for that barley holiday before you even step into your nine to five. So 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., what could we do? Well, for me, I'm going out and I'm getting my exercise in. For you, you might be listing those 10 listings a day. Listings, five a day. Now, once you get into the swing of things, a listing could take you about, you know, you could do a listing, let's give you 10 minutes, right, to do one listing. You, you do a bit of research on the item, you look up a great title for it, and then obviously from there you go ahead and you list it up. It might take you 10 minutes. So let's, let's account for 50 minutes. 50 minutes right there in listings. You also had a couple of sales come in because you've been doing this for quite a while now. You're going to ship in this two hours as well. And your shipping process might take you one hour. So one hour and 50 minutes, you've been able to knock the shipping over and you've also been able to list up your five listings for the day or you might be ahead of schedule and you're scheduling up some listings for future days, but you're getting all of that done between 5 and 7 a.m. before anybody else wakes up and it's only taking you two hours throughout the day. From there, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., you might be thinking, well, I start work at 9, I've got to get to the, this to the post office. Maybe it's lunch. Maybe it's lunchtime, you run to the post office and you drop off those items that you'd shipped up between 5 and 7 a.m. Lunchtime, post office drop, get some food, get back into work. Every workplace generally gives you a rock solid lunch hour. Use that lunch hour wisely. You may also be on the opposite side of things and you might think to yourself, man, I'm just not a morning person. I'm an afternoon or an, I'm a night hour. Well, there was a window over here, right? And that was from... Uh, let's call it 8 p.m. to 10, 8, uh, 10 p.m. These two hours here, it's the exact same replica uh, replication as the morning. I'm just going to do my listings and I'm going to do all of my shipping before I go to bed from 8, 8, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Now, the issue with that is you've had the stress of the day and you're just tired. And this, as your default option, could allow you to miss a couple of days. And if you miss a couple of days, the unbreakable schedule is broken and so for eBay is also broken because you need to be consistent every single day with these processes. I'll be touching on that a little bit further from an eBay standpoint a little bit later in the video. But that is an option for you if that's the way that you work best. If you just can't get it done in the morning, you've got that. The kids might be off to bed. They might be playing some video games and just chilling out. You don't need to do anything for them. 8 to 10 p.m., that's you. Every single day, Monday to Friday for 10 hours a week. So I believe that you can schedule up your week. And I believe it can be unbreakable. But we haven't actually touched on one thing in all of this, and that is actually when you're getting your stock. So for me, if I was doing this part-time as a side hustle, weekend fun. Grind throughout the week, Monday to Friday, weekend fun. The funnest part about eBay is sourcing, right? And that is all you should have to focus on doing on the weekend. Just source stock. Have, have that be the reward for the work that you've done from Monday to Friday. You could also, when you're at work, maybe on your lunch break after the post office or maybe if you've got a job where you're sitting behind a computer and you can get some time on your phone very sneakily from the boss. Don't lie, I know that you've been there. I've been there myself in previous roles. You might be able to get onto Facebook Marketplace at lunch, right? And you find yourself a deal on Facebook Marketplace. It could be some video games. They always do well on Marketplace. All right, so you've landed some video games at lunchtime. Remember, you're only trying to find 
for the goals that you set in place, you're trying to find 35 listings a week. Roughly 35, five a day, seven fives are 35. So every single week you're trying to find 35 items. I think you could find these 35 items over the weekend. And I also think if you, you were able to even help yourself even more, you could, find, you could find all 35 in one big video game listing on Facebook Marketplace, a big bulk deal. I think there is just so much ease when it comes to doing this as just a side hustle and you're not relying on the big numbers like you are when it comes to being a full-time seller. You can just play the cream of the crop. You're looking for $50 items. That was part of the goals that we'd set for yourself. And you're going to use the weekend to try and source $50 items only. Facebook Marketplace, there might be a single item that's worth 100 bucks, And you think to yourself, it's only 10 minutes away. I'll just pick that up on the way home from work. So it's so much easier when you've just got so much less to consider and less to find from a sourcing standpoint that I think you could get it done on the weekend alone. Now... Sourcing opportunities, if you're brand new to being a seller on eBay, if you're not yet doing it, you're thinking you're doing it, you're probably thinking, well, where am I going to get my stock from? Well, weekends, thrift stores are open. Facebook Marketplace is always open. Uh, you've got car boot sales. Flea markets, right? The flea markets are a great spot. I go out there all the time on a Sunday. That's a Sunday for me. So I lock that in. Uh, garage sales. Here's one that we never talk about, friends and family. You might be starting to tell a few people what you're doing selling on eBay and you might be like, hey, if you've got any of this category that I like to try and sell, I'd be happy to come around and buy it off you, maybe do some consignment. Friends and family, everyone's got stock lying around the house. You might be in a job where you're friendly with your clients or you're friendly with your customers and you might say to them, hey, I'm also doing this on the side. If you've got any of this, I'd be happy to buy it. There's some more work that's being done outside of the weekend from a sourcing perspective. But what I'm saying here is that the weekend is so plentiful of opportunities for you to be able to find 35 items a week. And from an hourly standpoint, I reckon you could get it done in three to four hours. It could be three to four hours of sourcing between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. Oh, sorry, 7 a.m. Well, that'd be nice. That'd be a fun day of sourcing. Um, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then the kids might be playing some afternoon sport. Uh, Lachlan and Declan might be going out and playing some basketball. And you can get the sourcing done in the morning. So whatever it is, I'm only working off this example of these two people, Michelle and Peter, because there are so many unique examples. But what you've got to really try and do for yourself is to create an unbreakable schedule. Look at your calendar and think to yourself, I could always, from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., it's, it's always free in my calendar. I could plug this in and say that I'm going to list and ship every single one. I'm going to attend to questions from, from basically eBay is going to be my two hours from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. or you're the, the night out and you're doing it from, say, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. as I touched on. But that is so, so crucial. You're going to need to have something set in place. This one, so that, that, so all that there, so we've set some goals, we've got um, the bank account set up so that once we get started, the money will start coming into the right location. Um, we've got our spreadsheet. The unbreakable schedule is now rock solid. We know how we're gonna go about it from a time aspect. Um, the next part is actually going out and sourcing the stock, right? It will, your success on eBay will always come down to just how good your items are. Yes, there's an element of how good your photos also are and how well structured your title is so that your item can be found. But I believe even the worst created listings are still going to get sold if the product is amazing, right? If it's a bad product and you've got great photos and a great title, you're just trying to cover up a turd, right? You're trying to create everything um, in its best light. But if the product is just dodgy and it's not cool, no one wants it, it's got a horrible sell-through rate, it's not quite $50 worth of an average sale price, it's not going to sell, okay? So sourcing, and, and really to, to highlight this, I'm actually, I know this is a whiteboard session, but I've, I've got a clip, and I'm going to put that clip into the video right now of Warren Buffett. And what this talks about is basically Warren, Warren Buffett's meticulous way that he goes about investing into stock. And we can relate this. If you think about it in relation to you buying something for your eBay business, I think this clip is going to make a lot of sense. Ted Williams wrote a book called The Science of Hitting, and in it he had a uh, picture of himself at bat and the strike zone broken into, I think, 77 squares. And he said if he waited for the pitch that was really in a sweet spot, 
he would bat 400, and if he had to swing at something on the lower corner, he would probably bat 235. And in investing, I'm in a no-called strike business, which is the best business you can be in. I can look at a thousand different companies, and I don't have to be right on every one of them, or even 50 of them. So I can pick the ball I want to hit. And the trick in investing is just to sit there and watch pitch after pitch go by and wait for the one right in your sweet spot. And the people are yelling, swing you bum, ignore them. There's a temptation for people to act far too frequently in stocks simply because they're so liquid. Over the years, you develop a lot of filters. And I do know what I call my circle of competence. So I, I, I stay within that circle and I don't worry about things that are outside that circle. Defining what your game is, where you're going to have an edge, is enormously important. All right. Circle of competence. He mentioned there having certain filters that he would basically use to work out whether or not it was within his strike zone. And ever since I, ever since I watched that, it's a documentary on HBO. You can watch the whole thing if you're into your investing or whatever the case may be. Maybe, you're trying to, maybe your goal is to save up money to put into an, uh, a, the stock market, for instance. Um, Warren Buffett, HBO doco, such a great, great watch. But that one little clip in there only goes for a minute, obviously. It was such a highlight for me around purchasing stock within your circle of confidence or just within the rules that you've set for yourself when it comes to sourcing stock. And that's what I touched on before around the $50 average sale price, that's, that's basically one of the filters that you're gonna set for yourself. Um, so when it comes to having a really strong sourcing mindset, this is where so many people go wrong because people love the source, they love the hunt, but they don't like to do any of the accountability in, in the work that's required to get the consistent sales to come back. They basically use, so many people use eBay um, to basically to just mask their hoarding nature of just wanting to buy, buy, buy. They're serial purchases and they really just don't care for the sales. It's all about the sourcing and that is, that is terrible. That's where the death piles come into play that you might have heard in, in, this, um, in this eBay world, which is just stock unlisted um, and not even to be considered listed either. Um, it's a big, big issue. A lot of people have got it. And I personally have always been on the standpoint to not have death piles, to just strike on the best items only with a Warren Buffett mindset and then have those items turn around for you, get your money back as well. So. Um, the Warren Buffett sourcing mindset for me when it comes to eBay is a high average sale price only. Now, back when I first started selling on eBay, I would buy and list items up around the $20 point. There was a time where I was buying DVDs and I was listing DVDs for $10 each. That was free postage. I had to pay for the postage. I had to pay the fees and the cost of goods, just like you do with any other item. And that was making me like two bucks in profit. And I was doing it at volume. Obviously, I was a full-time seller and I was trying to make things work and I thought that just buying as much as I could and getting all of this inventory and then listing it all up, oh, sales would just have to come back to me. And that was just a really, really bad way of going about it. And ever since then, I've tried to move things up to a minimum of $20. And even still here at $20, it would, it would mean that this is only gonna make me about, say, $10. So we're going from two to 10 but even 10 isn't that great right now. You know, making a $10 profit, remember our goals that we set for ourselves was to try and make 20 bucks. And I think as a part-time seller, to get more bang for buck in the items that you source when you're on limited time, you can't be out there sourcing everything, you don't have a lot of space at home to be able to house all of these items. Playing on a $20 profit, that's so much better. And we're gonna do that, that $20 in profit, by hitting our goal of $50. So when we're outsourcing, we're using 50 ASP. We are playing with high valued items only. That's $50 plus. We might find items in the hundreds, but we'll only consider it if it's $50 or more. Now, we're gonna use eBay. There is an app for eBay and you can find an item, I don't have an item on me, it might, be, it might be this right here, right? This could be the Yui Boom that we find at a garage sale for a dollar. And we type in Yui Boomed and we search Yui Boom for pre-owned and we realize that these things, these um, sound devices, sell for $60, right? 
we're stoked because that's hit our first filter, our first Warren Buffett filter. But the next Warren Buffett filter that I've got here is a term called sell-through. Sell-through rate. Now, sell-through rate refers to how quickly the item turns around for you. And there's two different ways that you can look at it using the eBay app. And basically what that does is it'll show you how many items are listed and how many items have sold. And there'll be two filters that you can uh, flick between on the eBay app and it will show you how many items are listed for the UE boom. So the boom equals listed, there might be four, say 400. But on the sold category, 600 have actually sold plus 100% sell through rate. So what those numbers there tell you when you look between the eBay app and you see the numbers, there are more sold than there are listed. That is a great product. So that's our first tick. We've got a great product that is selling fast and it's selling for $60. So it's hit both of our filters. That is in the Warren Buffett strike zone. I'm gonna go ahead and purchase it. However, how much is it? That's the third thing that we need to worry about, right? So it sells for 60 and it sells fast, but we're at a garage sale. How much is this thing actually gonna, how much are we gonna buy it for? This is where the next thing comes into it, right? Part of this circle of competence is using the eBay app as I've just shown you here, and it's using another tool that I've used forever, and it is called eProfit. This thing right here makes your life so, so much easier. It is a free download. Just jump onto the Apple Store, type in eProfit, it'll be the first one that pops up. Completely free. I cannot recommend this more, right? This will break down the $20 profit that you're trying to make. So eProfit, we found this item for 60 and then we find out at the garage sale, 10 bucks. He is offering it, the guy, the, the bloke that's having the garage sale, he's gonna give us to us for $10. We know that it might cost us $10 to ship. Cost of good is 10, shipping is 10, and then fees on eBay, you can say around 15% is gonna be fees. So the fees on $60 is $9 at 15%. That is $29 in costs on this item, this UE boom. The eProfit calculator does all of that for you by plugging in the numbers. It will give you your profit. It'll calculate all of these numbers and reduce it all out and it will tell you that the profit is gonna be $31. Now, with a $31 profit, does that hit our goal? Yes, it does. So that $60 UE boom we would say to the guy at the garage sale, you know what, for 10 bucks, yeah, I'll buy that. And what you've done at the garage sale before you've even purchased it is you've done all of this. You've jumped onto eBay, you've had a look, you haven't just bought willy-nilly, which is what a lot of people do. They just see an item, they go, you know, I'll have a stab in the dark at that. Not in this game as a part-timer, right? You wanna be super strategic, you wanna have a Warren Buffett mindset to your sourcing, and these are the filters that you're gonna to use to put you in that circle of competence. And it doesn't even need to be an item that you know. You might know nothing about UE Booms. You might even know, not know what it is, but there might be some style code on the UE Boom that you can plug into Google to get its full entire name. And then you can use that name and you can put it into eBay to get some solds. And then those solds will tell you that it's worth about 60 bucks. So eBay app, eProfit app, are two absolute monsters to tick off the goal of step number four Warren, I'm just gonna say Warren Buffett, the great man. What is he, third richest person in the world? Fourth person, I don't know what his number is, but he's, he's up there, Warren Buffett. Um, so there you go, huge, huge step. Now, step five. Step five, you wanna set yourself up for success on eBay, because what we've done now is we've set ourselves up personally with these first three. So this is all personal stuff, right? This is you putting yourself in the best possible position to dominate on eBay. This is a bit of both. But number five and six, 
These are eBay specific steps. I would argue that these two are the most crucial. Personal both eBay, right? So, step five. Setting yourself up for success. So we'll say eBay success. Now, if you haven't done much selling on eBay, you're probably gonna be a little bit clueless as to how to do it, right? And there's a lot of useful information on eBay, on uh, YouTube. Um, a lot of different creators, a bit like me, that have done it for quite a while, that know a couple of different things that they can obviously educate um, through the YouTube channel that they have. And I would recommend that you guys go and source that free information um, yourselves on how to best go about it. What I've got for you here, I think there's eight that I've written down. Um, there's eight things that I, I think that you should absolutely do when you're going to put your products onto eBay. Once you've done the Warren Buffett sourcing method and you've only just bought the best products only and you've said no to the rest, um, you then want to go through these eBay success steps that I'm about to take you through now. So, first one, your titles are monster. They are so crucial when it comes to selling on eBay. So you're gonna really wanna make sure that you nail these titles. And what I mean by that is you're front-ending the key information at the start of the title. There's no emojis, there's no very good condition men's Hoka running shoes. It would be Hoka, men's running shoes, US size eight, black, very good condition if you wanna put that in there, but I wouldn't. Um, so front-ending your titles, if, if you focus nothing more on your listing than nailing your title, because that's where the search uh, engine optimization will come into it, it'll, it'll pull out those keywords that you've got. Um, so the bigger the keyword, put them at the front, stand the best chance of your item being found. Um, so titles I would be definitely doing. I would be using the promoted listing feature at 3%. In my store, 3% generates me 60% of my sales. And you're probably thinking, what does that refer to, 3%? Well, in fees on eBay, you're going to pay about 12% standard. But then from there, you can add a certain promotion of listing to your overall fee. And what that will do is it will give you a few extra impressions right at the very top of the search bar sporadically. So a certain number of buyers based on the percentage that you've got are going to see your listing over all the others playing off the standard fee rate. They don't get any additional promotion. This though, at an extra 3%, and this is 3% and 12% off the item selling. So if it's $60, that's where the $9 that we spoke of before comes into play, um, 12 plus 3. 15%, you're only paying $9 in fees, um, but you're getting the sale. You're getting the sale with that 3% where if you, if you didn't go with an extra 3%, yes, you'll only pay 12% in fees, but you're probably gonna have to wait a long time to see it. Um, that item might not sell really fast. So promoted listings at 3%, I can't recommend that more. Um, best offers, I'm not gonna harp on this for too much, but eBay gives you an opportunity to send and accept best offers. You have to do it. I think there's about 40% of my listings um, are either done through send and accept of best offers. Um, 30 day free returns, set it up. 30 day free returns, my, my, my return rate on eBay is 1%. So you're really not gonna be dealing with this too often. So make it free returns. Give the buyer confidence before they go ahead and transact on your item that they can send it back for free and you'll cover the cost of getting it back to you um, in every single one of your listings because that will just allow so much more confidence for, for your item to be, uh, to be purchased and it'll also give you the opportunity for your item to be found because eBay wants to promote the listings that are offering 30 day free returns. So that's another one. Um, now your shipping and handling, same day. I'm gonna say it, in my world of uh, Michelle and Peter and the kids, I still think with their hectic schedule, they can be a same day shipper. If something sells throughout the day, I still think that they could have something because it's basically up until 2 p.m., right? 2 p.m., up until 2 p.m. every single day, it would need to be fulfilled within that day. That would mean though, I'm just having a think about this now, that would mean that they would need to do this between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. And Michelle is potentially a morning person, which would cause same day to be a problem. So for Michelle, if you're a morning person, one day. One day or same day, depending on how you can fit it into your schedule. If you're doing your eBay work at nighttime, you could facilitate all the orders from that day and you could have that facilitated and then drop it off to the post office the next day. But for safety, a one day shipping and handling time 
should be perfect. One day shipping and handling, remember that at the time of just starting out, there's not gonna be a volume of sales. I've been doing this to 130K a year and I'm only doing 10 sales a day. And that doesn't take a hell of a lot of time to package up and send off. And even within a two hour window, just giving the, giving the confidence of the buyer to say that you're gonna send out your item really quickly to them uh, is gonna help with the transactions of your sales. So one day, let's call it one day shipping and handling. I do it same day, but I do have every single hour up my sleeve to be able to do that. Now, you want six plus photos. eBay really recommends that you do at least six photos in every single one of your listings. So when you're taking your photos, not that we're gonna go into a big photo breakdown today, but make sure you've at least got six shots. And just make sure they're really bright like the box lights that we've got here. They are linked in the description below if you're wanting to get yourself some really good box lights. That will help your photos. Um, they, I think they cost me about 80 odd dollars or 100 odd dollars. Wasn't a lot of money. Um, two more. Blemishes. Now, what we didn't touch on when it came to the Warren Buffett sourcing uh, strategy was if this UE boom had a big crack in it, right at the top there, right on the top there, there was a big crack, but it worked and you've tested it and it's all good to go and you reckon you could still get about 60, maybe $55 accounting for the crack. Blemishes need to be photographed and they need to be put in the description, right? If you don't, you're gonna run into massive issues with your eBay store because it's gonna be received by the buyer, there's gonna be no photos showing it, there's gonna be no description about it and then they're gonna see it and they're gonna go, oh my God, there's a massive crack in it, I am so angry about this, eh, negative feedback. And then from there, your, store, your, your, screw sto uh, your screw's stored. Your store is screwed. So photos and description of any blemishes, I cannot recommend that more. And then finally, top rated seller. Huge for your success to go to Bali, right? Now, so what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. eBay practices. Right, Those are the things that I would be doing on eBay with those really good Warren Buffett listings. I'll be going ahead and doing those steps when it comes to, uh, to listing your product up on eBay. That will stand you, if you're ticking off all of them, every single one of your listings, they're gonna be seen and they're gonna be bought and you know they're already good because you've already done that prior research. It's bulletproof, right? Now, I wanted to touch on top rated because I, actually made a, this year, I'm only talking a couple of weeks ago, I made a beginner series on my YouTube channel. There were seven videos and what I wanted to do at the start of the year is I wanted to create a brand new store, which was basically like this. It's, it's doing part time, I literally wanted to do this for myself. So I have my main store and then spend 10 hours a week on my second store because that is the equivalent of somebody else doing a nine to five. For me, yes, it's the same thing doing eBay but I've only got a smaller amount of time to work on my second store. And I wanted to give myself a goal of $5,000, but I wanted to do that within my first 90 days of selling. And one of my goals was this, to become a top rated seller as quickly as I possibly could. Now, to get to top rated seller, you need to do $3,000 in sales revenue. And you also need to, uh, uh, that's right, 100, transactions. So if you sell three grand in revenue and you have a hundred, so a $30 average sale price. So, you know, if you're working off a $50 average sale price, you're going to get there sooner, but you still need a hundred. eBay still wants you to get a hundred transactions under your belt. If you can show eBay that you're doing everything correctly with a hundred transactions, three grand in revenue, all done within the first 12 months, you become a top rated seller. And that is crucial. That is crucial to your success as an eBay seller because you're gonna get promoted more and you're gonna get recommended more by eBay. They're gonna think that you are a reputable seller and they're gonna look after you with more page views, more impressions, they're gonna promote you more uh, as opposed to being an average seller or a below standard seller, which is territory you just don't wanna get into. So the other metrics, $3,000 and your first 100 sales. So in those early uh, days, I started doing my, my second store and I actually stopped. I stopped based on negative feedback from the people that I was making the videos for. Um, they basically said that um, 
you know, I use my, my YouTube channel, um, you know, audience that I was educating, they were able to go and get onto my eBay store and, and buy an item to help me out. And then therefore my numbers were inflated off a beginner trying to do it. You know, viewer sales for me are, are minimal. I don't get a lot of sales compared to the millions of people that are out there on eBay trying to buy. So I thought that was strange. I was able to do $3,000 in revenue within about 70 days. And I had stopped for a few days, a few weeks prior to that as well. But I have an average sale price, which was the same goal as this example today. My average sale price remained at $50. And I had, it, I had in my mind, I was only trying to source $50 plus items only and try and average around about that $50 average sale price. And after you know, 60, 70 odd days, I'd, I'd achieved 3,000 in revenue. Uh, I had 25 active listings and I think I had uh, 60 sold items. So talking about sell-through rate, there was only 20 odd active, but yet there were 60 sold within 60 days. Um, so I was getting really, really close. I was only 40 sales away from having that top-rated seller status. And that was off complete scratch with a brand new store. And it all came down to the success of the items that I was sourcing using the filters that I'd just spoken to you about. So, you know, while I am doing this at a full-time level, it was that seven video series, and yes, I didn't get the 5,000, and yes, I didn't complete the 90 days, but geez, it was on track. It was doing really, really well because of these steps that I was following. So I have absolute confidence that if you were to do all of this to date so far, you would absolutely get there, but you won't get there if you don't do this final step. And this final step refers to having a marathon mindset. Marathon mindset. I say marathon mindset because I am personally a marathon runner myself and it takes a very, very long time to train to have ultimate success in a marathon. And eBay is the exact same thing. I see so many similarities to all of my running training as I do with my eBay. My whole life is around discipline, consistency, and just ultimately motivation to try and hit the goals that I've set for myself. My goal for a marathon is to try and break four hours. That's what I'm doing every single training session. I've got a key ring that a friend gave me and it says 359. That's my big goal, that's my North Star. Um, and then there's small goals that you can break out under that. I've got a half marathon goal that I'm trying to achieve and if I can do that, then I'm a whole lot closer to getting my 359 goal in the marathon. So it, 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 it all replicates, right? Um, my unbreakable schedule and my Warren Buffett sourcing is the training sessions that I choose to do, speed intervals, hill sessions. Having a marathon mindset when it comes to eBay though, is it knowing that you're in it for the long run. You're in it for 12 months. You're doing this for 12 months to try and make you $12,000. It might take you even longer. It might take you a shorter amount of time to hit your 12,000, but you won't know about it unless you stick to the process over that time and also be okay with making mistakes. That's one of the biggest things, mistakes. I have made so many over the last four years. I'm still making them today. I'm always making mistakes, but that doesn't stop me from pushing towards the goal, learning from them, taking a step back, and then pushing again. So get over the fear of making mistakes. Get over the fear of international shipping. That's where a lot of mistakes come into play. That's where a lot of fear comes. Fear is something that stops a lot of people doing a lot of great things in their life. And that's an example of fear. Making the mistake, trying to do something based on international shipping. You can absolutely do international shipping. You can make a lot of money. I make 10% of my sales through international shipping and people just don't do it because they're nervous about doing it. Whereas if they just got started and they made their first mistake, they would then make 20 other great sales that profited them a lot of money because they just pushed through it. So you're going to be constantly learning, you're going to be constantly evolving, your goals are potentially going to tweak and change, but I think just having a marathon mindset and knowing that this is the process that I'm in, the algorithm isn't going to give me sales immediately, but I know the blueprint, I know the six steps that it's going to take to be able to achieve my goals. And if you do these six steps, I truly believe as a nine to five worker, you're going to be able to create a side hustle that is incredibly efficient. You're only going to be working 10 hours a week and then you're going to have two to three hours on the weekend. I think this is a 12-hour exercise. 12 hours to make $12,000 a year to be able to go to Bali. I don't know. Is it worth it? I truly think it is. Whatever that big goal is, make it big enough where the work is going to be worthwhile. 
For me, I'm working every single day to just keep a full-time job for myself where I get to work for myself and have the freedom to be able to do whatever I want and pick to do whatever I want on any given day. That is my North Star goal. Just keep me in the shoes that I'm in, being able to pay my bills every single week. And I work really hard every single day on my eBay to try and tweak things, become more efficient, learn, make mistakes, get better, to ultimately achieve my North Star, which is staying in full-time work for myself. But whatever this is for you, understand that it is the marathon mindset, understand that it is the eBay success, understand that it is the Warren Buffett sourcing, it is having an unbreakable schedule, it is a bank account that will let you know that you're ready to go to Bali, and it is also having the goals in place to say that that is where I want to be. I want to be going to Bali at the end of the year. Hopefully all of that's made sense. It's the first time I've ever done a video on this channel after 500 odd videos like this on a whiteboard, just talking to camera free run. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know if you have in the comments learned anything. Let me know if you're gonna start selling on eBay. Um, and if you missed a video that I made, which was all the technical stuff on eBay, really nitty gritty eBay stuff, actually how to properly list an item, how to source, etc. There's a video for you right here, which I, I highly recommend you guys diving into. But thanks for being here for this one, guys. Look forward to seeing you soon.